I call to order this May, I'm sorry, that's not the right one, June 17, 2019 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item is approval of minutes of the May 20, 2019 regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move we approve the minutes of the May 20th, 2019 regular meeting as submitted. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you. We also have approval of minutes of June 11, 2019 special meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the minutes of the June 11, 2019 special meeting as submitted. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you. It's now past the hour of 7 p.m. We have a public hearing to consider an application as submitted by Juniper Hill Golf Course Incorporated to alter the premises of its Chapter 138, Section 12 license for premises located at 202 Brigham Street. Mr. Dudley Darling, welcome. Thank you. Again. <laughs> I'm Dudley Darling, uh, General Manager and Vice President of uh, Juniper Hill Golf Course. Uh, the golf course is requesting a uh, uh, alteration of the premises for our uh, Section 12 license for alcohol serving for 202 Brigham Street. Uh, the request for the, uh, the change would be to incorporate uh, the area that's now served by one of our other licenses, 169 Brigham Street, which uh, covers the lakeside course. Um, originally, just for a little history, uh, originally we had the, the riverside course, yes. and we had a license for that. And then we opened the, the lakeside course and uh, obtained a license for that at the uh, snack bar. Uh, then in, uh, you know, was uh, 2000, 1999, 2000, we had an addition put on the clubhouse and we had a, a pavilion built. We received a license for the pavilion. Mm -hmm. And then about 10 years ago, uh, we were able to uh, get the laws changed so we could serve uh, on the golf course. So the golf, the whole area of the golf course became uh, part of the licenses that uh, scoped by the original license I'm sorry it's scoped by the original license uh, two of the original well the original license plus the the second okay. one yeah the pavilion license uh, that was considered <coughs> part of the Riverside course so that was absorbed into the the uh, uh, original license for 202 Brigham Street yeah. and then um, more recently um, found out from the ABC that <coughs> because it's all owned by the corporation, that um, it, it was possible to absorb the license for the um, lakeside course into the original license. Okay. Uh, we do have a, a Brigham Street which bisects the course and uh, it required uh, permits for beverage carts to cross the, the road, which we obtained about 10 years across ago. the public way, basically. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we're asking to have everything rolled into one license, mm -hmm. and then when that happens, we'll surrender the other uh, license. So that will give the town a license back. Okay. Thank you. John? If I may, just, yep. just for a little bit uh, of background, um, this was all uh, brought forward when Mr. Dudley applied for a second all-alcoholic pouring license for the location across the street. And uh, so we started looking in, and, and on the surface, common sense-wise, it doesn't make sense that there would be two licenses. It's all one management, one operation, really one owner. Uh, so we started to work with uh, town council, and we worked with the ABCC. And uh, working through both those uh, and the owner, we were able to uh, get clear um, approval from the ABCC and, and a blessing from town council that the one existing license should be able to cover everything. That was the intent of the legislation, a mass general law that changed about 10 years ago. And so this is just cleaning everything up. In fact, from the town's perspective, this is preferred one license 
covering the entire premises. And uh, as Mr. Darling said, we will get the beer and wine back and we'll have that to, uh, for another location potentially. So this is uh, recommended by staff. And the most important piece of this, as he indicated, is he had to get the transportation permit uh, from the state just to be able to cross Brigham. So he has those for two carts, uh, which allows him to transport the alcohol to and from to that other location. So um, at this point, staff would recommend approval of this. Okay. Any questions from the board? Leslie? Also, the uh, conditions that are on um, page two of the memo, these are things that are currently in place and will continue. This yes. is nothing new. Right. Okay. Correct. Yes. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, this is a public hearing. Any questions from the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion to close the hearing? Motion to close the hearing. Do I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded to close the hearing. All in favor? Great. Do I have a motion to proceed? Mr. Chair, <clears throat> I move the board vote to approve the application as submitted by Juniper Hill Golf Course, Inc. to alter the premises of its all alcoholic beverages licenses for premises located at 202 Brigham Street to include the building and grounds across the public way known as 169 Brigham Street, and further that the current license conditions remain in place. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. I would also <laughs> like to report that I have uh, quite a few happy customers on Sunday mornings because uh -huh. of the uh, additional time that they, they can have a beer while they're out playing golf. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Let's uh, pass the hour of 7.05. Uh, we have Town Center Pizza Incorporated to consider an application as submitted by Town Center Pizza for a common victualler and entertainment license for premises located at 245A West Main Street. Yes. Step up. Hi. State your name, please. Uh, Mohammed Skiba. You're the applicant. Yeah. And this is uh, just a typical routine typical license typical application. Yes. Um, and you have uh, entertainment license for purposes of having a television, is yes. that it? So, okay. Um, I don't think we have anything of significance to inquire about here. Don? It's not of significance, but I've got a yeah. lot of Ganson School kids that are waiting to get sandwiches and pizza when you plan to open. Uh, after, the, after the 4th of July. Fourth of July. After. After. Yep. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Any other questions, Leslie? Yeah. Where exactly will the uh, television be? On this diagram, I wasn't sure. It will be next to the windows, outside windows. Next to the, the outside top. windows. Yeah. Oh. Okay. In the front. Okay. And facing in. Yes. Not out. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and anything else? Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move the board vote to approve the application as submitted by Town Center Pizza for a common victualler and entertainment license for premises located at 245A West Main Street. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Very good. Congratulations, Mr. Chair. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Now past the hour of 7.08 p.m., we have Northboro Rotary Club, Club to consider an application for a one-day special license for wine and malt beverages for premises located at 244 West Main Street. George Pember. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. And the Rotary Club is having our uh, pride and workmanship dinner, and we're going to honor one of the members of the police force with that award. And so we need a one-day license to serve alcohol. Mm -hmm. and this would be at the St. Rose of Lima Church. That's the location. Team, any questions from the board, Leslie? So it sounds like he'll be in the parking lot afterwards, monitoring people as they leave. <laughs> well, I think the serving double will be duty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent. That's great. Uh, any other questions, comments from the board? Hearing none, uh, do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move the board vote to approve the application for a special one-day license as submitted by George Pember on behalf of the Rotary Club of Northboro, Inc. 
for an event to be held at the St. Rose of Lima Parish 244 West Main Street on Tuesday, June 18th, 2019, between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Per the re recommendation of the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission, the license shall include the 24-hour period immediately before and after the event in order to allow for proper delivery and disposal of all alcoholic beverages prior to and immediately following the event and to further waive the fee. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you very much. George. And it's now past the hour of 7, 10 p.m. Davidians Farm to consider an application for a one-day special license for wine and malt beverages for premises located at 155 Ball Street. Hello. 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 State names, please. Yep. Michael Davidian. Heidi Cooper. Hi. How are you doing? Great. So um, just to give you a little background on what we're looking to do is uh, we do a charity event every year in our apple orchard. This event raises money for the Pan Mass Challenge, which in turn raises money for cancer research. So in years past, uh, well, last year, uh, for example, we raised over $8,000 for uh, cancer research. So moving forward to this year, we're looking to uh, incorporate Cold Harbor Brewery, who has been um, pretty instrumental in helping us raise funds through other things they do internally. So we thought it would be a nice addition to the event we already currently do. Very good. Any questions from the board? Leslie? So anyone over 21 will have a wristband? Yes, 100%. Okay. We're Certain color that will be easy Yeah, to so we'll, um, we're going to have one person monitoring, uh, checking IDs, okay. putting the wristband, one entrance and exit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to run it a limited time. So the event starts at 4, so it's going to go from 4 to 8. That's it for alcohol. And then the event takes on, uh, does an outdoor movie, and people are welcome to camp in the orchard. So it's pretty fun. Okay. And I'll just mention, um, according to this, it's actually the Cold Harbor Brewery staff who will be yes. uh, conducting the, uh, that portion of the event, and they're TIP certified, so everything is yep. all set. 100%. Yep. Any other questions? Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move the board vote to approve the application for a one-day special license as submitted by Davidian Farm for an event to be held on the grounds of the farm at 155 Ball Street on June 29, 2019, between 4 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. with the following conditions. One, the license shall include the 24-hour period be immediately before and after the event in order to allow for the proper delivery and disposal of all alcoholic beverages prior to and immediately following the event. Two, guests shall have identification on their person and those who are 21 years or older will be given wristbands. Three, proper signage and barriers notifying guests that alcohol must be contained in the designated area only. No alcohol is allowed near the game area or on wagon rides. Four, satisfactory inspection shall be performed prior to the start of the event by the fire, building, and health departments. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. <clears throat> and we're a minute away from the hour of 7.15. <laughs> uh, I will ask the, um, uh, the members of the planning board to come up and uh, take seats at the table. Uh, we're going to have a uh, Carrie Martinick, the chair of the board, come up next to me um, for purposes of conducting the interviews with the applicants. So, thank you, John. Sure. Uh, 
Carrie, why don't you go ahead and call the board to order? Yep, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the planning board. Thank you for having us. Pleased to be here. Um, uh, do you want to begin yes, by outlining sure. the circumstances of what yeah. this is? So we're going to get started with the interview <coughs> process. We're going to walk, before we get started with the actual interviews, we're going to just walk through a couple of different areas to talk about what's going to happen this evening. So first, I'm going to cover just the circumstances that has uh, caused the need for this appointment. The planning board had a vacancy created by Teresa Capiobanco's uh, resignation. The town thanks Teresa for her service. Her Mass General Law Chapter 41, Section 81A, in our town charter 3-11B, the planning board and the board, the board of selectmen jointly appoint a citizen to the remainder of the term. So um, per our policy with a vacancy, we publicized the vacancy. Applications were accepted through Wednesday, June 12th. Uh, four applications were received. One was withdrawn, so we'll have three people interviewing for the vacancy this evening. Um, tonight, we'll interview the applicants, and ex we expect to make an appointment at the end of the session. The remainder of the term is one year. It expires in May 2020. Uh, which at that time the seat is up for election. Um, in terms of the selection procedure, so what we're going to do is um, the committee members on both boards have had a chance to review the application forms and all the material submitted by the applicants. Um, we will interview the candidates in order of the applicant submission. Following the interviews, the committees will deliberate on each applicant's qualifications. Then following del deliberation, we'll nominate, second, have <coughs> further discussion, and then we'll vote. Um, this is a public meeting, but it's not a public hearing, so we will not solicit public comments tonight for the purpose of this interview process. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to follow up in a little more detail about the interview procedure, um, we're going to ask um, candidates who have not yet been interviewed to please step out of the room so they, they don't have the advantage of hearing questions in advance. Um, uh, we'll have each applicant introduce themselves and briefly summarize their interest, experience, and qualifications. Then the boards will pose questions to the applicants. Um, those questions will focus on the applicant's broad and relevant abilities, qualifications, and experience. We don't expect to delve into the applicant's stance on any specific past or current planning issue. And during the interview's uh, questioning portion, we will refrain from any deliberative comments that would express an opinion about the candidates. Um, uh, following, uh, well, in conducting the questions, we'll first have the planning board through Carrie ask a standard set of questions of all applicants, um, or for each applicant. I will then follow up with a standard set of questions on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, when those two sections are completed, then we'll open it up to other members of the boards to follow up with specific questions to the candidate about their particular experience or whatever occurs to you during the initial portion of the questioning. <clears throat> when that phase is completed, um, the applicant may ask any questions of their own or offer any final remarks on behalf of their candidacy. And then following uh, the interview, that candidate may choose to depart or they may stay to observe the remainder of the proceedings. And so with that, I think we <coughs> shall begin with our first applicant, which I believe is Fran Backstrand. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, Fran. Please state your name and address. Sure, me. Fran Backstrand at 76 Cedar Hill Road. Great. And would you care to just make an initial statement uh, as to your qualifications and interest? Sure. All right, so I've lived in town since 1987, bought a house um, over the, on Cedar Hill Road, uh, built in the 1950s. I have, um, from the point of about within five years of moving here, I got involved. Actually, my first interaction with the town on any official level was to sue the planning board over a development that was in my backyard, relatively in my backyard. Um, what I learned from that, pro uh, that experience was that while the butters have a lot of concerns and questions about development, there, are, there is a balance between what they would like to see in their backyard and what a developer or a property owner has as rights. So what that took me to was the next path of realizing I had to learn more about what it means to, what do you mean I can't say no? I don't like it. I want to say no. So 
I studied, I watched, I participated. I got elected to the Board of Selectmen in 2005. I served two years, I'm sorry, two terms. Um, during that process, I was on the uh, revision committee of the zoning bylaws that met for 18 months on a weekly basis to help to improve our zoning bylaws. I was active with the Historical Commission to develop and um, present at a town meeting our demolition delay bylaw, the first one that was for six months. Um, and then I took a year off after I um, gave up after six years of selectmen and I got on the Zoning Board of Appeals. I do really feel like the land use boards are um, uh, the, the, some of the most important boards, committees in our town. Um, if you want to help um, craft and manage and uh, develop the town at the same time keeping its character, those are the boards that you want to uh, participate in. So here I am, willing to fill in the seat for a year hit the ground running and um, help you in any way I can. Okay, great. So I'm gonna start with a set of common questions from the planning board. To some extent you've answered them okay. a little bit, but I'm gonna ask anyway, um, sure. in terms of maybe specific experience, is there anything that you can mention here that would benefit the planning board? Well, um, other than, I mean, like I said, I, I know the zoning bylaws, I know how the process works. I, I can be a team play, player, but I am also very determined. I have uh, my own, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not thin-skinned, so I don't mind disagreeing. Um, I can play devil's advocate to try to flesh, you know, flesh something out. But, um, I mean, I think I would be a good addition for the year. I'm gonna skip two because it's okay. about, yeah, if you're familiar with the master plan. Yeah, I, think. I am. Right. Um, and the second, and the third one, I think you did answer to some extent in what you were saying. Um, the question is about how you balance the concerns of abutters against the property rights of an applicant to develop their property in accordance with the zoning bylaws. And it sounded like you answered that a little yeah. bit. And and that is a tough one. I mean, there are many times even on the zoning board that you know Fran doesn't like it. I'm talking to the third person, and I, and I, <laughs> and I want to say no, but I understand my role, and my role is to evaluate the project. Um, and balancing those two things. And that's the hardest part. I mean, and I don't envy, you know, the members of the planning board or the fellow zoning board uh, members, because that is the most difficult to look at the neighbors and say, I get what you're saying, but you, if you don't want that developed, then you need to purchase the land so you can control the development or participate in the process to revise um, the bylaws, which should be an ongoing. We should never, it should never be a stagnant document. It should be ongoing. That's it for common questions for the planning board. Okay, thank you. Um, for the Board of Selectmen, um, could you just uh, restate uh, how long you've been a resident? Fran? Since 1987. 1987. And um, since your residency, uh, I'm, I'm a nuts and bolts person, so I go back to the most basic things in mm -hmm. town service. Mm -hmm. uh, how many evenings would you say uh, of town meetings over that period of time have, uh, have you attended? Well, I mean, I think w with, the exception, with the exception of the first I would say three to four years that I lived in town and didn't even understand the concept. Mm -hmm. I watched the televised Board of Selectmen meetings and started learning that way. But I would think that I was probably here close to five years before I went to a town meeting. But since then, unless this, there was a blip in something, I would have attended all of them. And so essentially that's since 91, 92. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I went, I mean, before maybe yeah. 93. Well, I know I went 93 because that's when we, we put a citizen's petition up for against the <laughs> development of Aspen Hill. There you go. <laughs> so I know I went then. And likewise, town elections. Uh, oh, yes, I participate in town elections. Um, what prompts you to volunteer at this time? And, and maybe more to the point, what prompts you to, as a member of the zoning board at, at this time, what prompts you to seek this vacancy on the planning board? Because it's a one year, and I feel like I can just help for that one year. I have no commitment to thinking I want to run for it in, in 2020, but I feel like I can fill the seat now with experience that's relevant to the committee. I mean, we have, uh, the reason why we have staggered elections is so that you're never at any one time a board of a lot of novice or, um, you know, um, less experienced people. So I think that what I would bring could be a good balance for the newest members as well as the more seasoned members. Uh, you're certainly aware of the substantial time commitment involved. I am. Um, yeah. uh, and so this appointment is uh, for the remainder of the vacated term. The seat will be up for election. If you're appointed, you 
do intend to stand for election or you're uncertain at this point? I mean, at this point, I, I would not do both. I mean, I would not do the zoning board and the planning board um, after this one year. I would have to assess which one I would be more interested in. I don't think it would be fair to either board to try to do both for a three-year period. I, I, I think that um, in fairness, I mean, they're, they're, to be honest, there have to be other people that are interested in volunteering. <laughs> but, I mean, I, yeah. Right. And so um, if you are appointed, it's not your intention to relinquish the ZBA appointment? Not for this year, no. Not for this year. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any concerns about that in terms of people feeling that's too much influenced by one person across those two boards? No, because there's nine other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's um, four other members of, or eight other people that also have influence. I'm just one of five in either board. Um, with your experience, I assume you have understanding of the roles of the planning board, board of appeals, um, town planner? Yes, I do. Town engineer, yep. zoning enforcement officer? Yes. Okay. Uh, you have previously served, you have previously been a petitioner, you have offered public input mm -hmm. at a hearing, you have spoken at town meeting on a zoning related matter? Yes, I have. Yes. <coughs> Are you familiar with the current members of the planning board and in what ways would you complement, broaden, strengthen, or diversify the collective experience and expertise of the board? Oh, um, well, I know some better than others. Um, I mean, I think I would complement because I am an independent thinker, but I, I, I can sit there and think and hear other people say things and actually change my mind be and be influenced by others, which I think is important. I don't have any um, set path. I think that uh, I would have to say most directly that when Amy has come before the zoning board or has had, I've had conversations with her, I get what she's saying and sometimes I feel like if that, um, like I understand the intent and maybe we just need to reword or rethink, but I mean, I think that I would play well with them. <laughs> uh, the master plan is nearing completion in the coming year will transition to the next phase of planning and implementation in what way do you see yourself being able to contribute to that transition oh um, we're gonna hit when it's all um, in its draft form it's going to go before these two boards for consideration um, and, and acceptance and then um, hopefully, we're going to crack the spine on it and um, start using it as a tool or um, to a path of the future. I mean, I mean that's the whole reason why we're doing it, right? To give us that um, path. Thank you. Uh, what would be your primary goal for the planning board to address? In the, this one year? Not necessarily the one year, but what do you think is the most critical thing? I think the most important thing for the planning board is to, on an ongoing basis, look at the zoning bylaws. Don't set yourself in cement and say this is the way it is. And I have to say, I learned that myself when um, we did all that work on the zoning bylaws. And we then f put the document forward. It got approved at town meeting. And then within two years, the planning board wanted to tweak it. And it was like, well, we worked so hard. We thought we had it right. But since then, I mean, I mean, I've read some of the, the minutes from the, the meetings over the past year, and there is a need for evolution. It is not a stagnant document, and we should constantly be looking at it, not so far back as removing piggeries and haberdasheries, but um, you know, we've already cleaned all that up. But yeah, because things change. Um, we have an additional question from a member of the board. Considering the development boom in Worcester, which that currently is, city is currently experiencing, are there any issues that Northboro should be thinking about? Issues? Well, um, I wouldn't say issues, but if we could somehow get them to get the WRTA to actually come into Northboro and provide public transportation, that would be um, a benefit to our town. Uh, that concludes my set of questions. Uh, Carrie, would you like to open it up to the planning board members? I would, yes. So I'm going to open it up. Uh, Michelle, do you mind if I start with you, if you have any follow-up questions? Okay. Thank you. Amy? I had a talk about planning. Do you want to ask? Yeah. Anthony? Okay. 
uh, Board of Selectmen, any further questions? <coughs> Leslie. Thank you for coming in, Fran. No problem. Um, how you've had a lot of experience. You've had a lot of experience in the Board of Selectmen and experience on the ZBA. How do you feel specifically that those two positions um, lend themselves to, to fulfilling a role in the planning board? Well, the planning board is planning, right? I mean, and in my day job, I'm a planner. I, I work with the Older Americans Act funding for community grants and services for p older Americans, and I plan for the future all the time. So I get the, the concept of planning. I think it's important. I think you have to have, you know, a strong foundation. The Board of Selectmen taught me how to, how the process works. I mean, I have my own copy of Robert's Rules. I understand the process of how things go. But I also, I mean, as much of a liberal Democrat as I always thought I was, the experience that I had on the Board of Selectmen taught me that you have to have fiscal, fiscally conservative on occasion and, and to be practical. Um, which I thought was a great, again, it was eye-opening. I think it's wonderful. I still learn something new every day, and I think that that's great, that uh, I, as much as I feel like I know from life's experience, I learn something new every day. So why not learn and use what I'm learning to help everybody else? Great. Any other questions? Tim. <coughs> Thanks for coming in, Fran. No I think when, when looking at the board, I think there's two aspects to it. There's, there's the experience aspect, which I sure, certainly think you have quite a bit of. Um, but I also think there's a personality and the culture fit to the board, and we're in a new, unique position here where we get to actually appoint somebody, which is unusual for the planning board. Um, I've been to a number of planning board meetings over the course of the last year, and the, and the members of the planning board are um, very passionate and very committed about what they're doing. Um, and I think the person that's going to be on the board needs to be somebody that can stand on their two, own two feet and stand up for what they believe in. Um, how do you think you'll fit that role? Okay. I'm the second oldest of eight. I am the only <laughs> one that still talks back to my father at the age of 93, and if you want anything done, you ask me. Um, I, I am, by nature, um, a leader. Um, it doesn't mean I have to be in charge. It doesn't mean that I have to have the last say. But I am my own person. I, I make decisions based on the best information that I get and the, my processing method. I mean, again, I, I mean, um, I know, I mean, I've had experience with everyone here, um, some more casually than others, but I mean, I don't, I mean, I probably will give you a hard time because I ask why. I want to know why. I don't accept yes or no without a good explanation. And if, if it's not, if it doesn't fit in the logical part of my brain, I'll continue asking why. But I have to be honest in what I've watched in the, the videos and read in the minutes, I wouldn't be the only one asking why. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can play well with others. Leslie. I do have another question. If you're not necessarily considering running for the planning board in 2020, what would be the main reason you would want to serve for just one year? Because I think I could help for the one year because I have experience and I can bring that experience to an otherwise pretty young um, board. I mean, uh, two of the members have a, year's, a year under their belt and then um, it's Amy and Michelle with collectively, I mean, I know Michelle's been on for a while, but I would just bring experience and I would be able to help starting tomorrow night. I could sit down and actually help and, and interact and work with without skipping a beat. And somewhere in the next nine to ten months, I decide whether it's something I'd want to do for another three years or at least attempt to. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Sorry, writing notes. Okay. Uh, and that's all the board has. Okay. I think that's all we have. Yeah, any questions or final remarks? No, I mean, I, you know, again, I'm just happy to do it if you want me to. If you don't, it, you know, no harm, no foul. <laughs> so, but I'm more than happy to do it. And I'm free tomorrow. I already put it in my calendar, so just let me know. Thanks for coming. All right, thank Great. you. Thank you very thank much. Fran. Thanks, Fran. Thank you. Yeah. It, well, I, I had, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, the next candidate is um, having to look at the list here. Uh, Millie Milton. Millie, yep. Do I have to talk into this? Uh, it'll catch you. Yes. <laughs> uh, so thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for putting an application in for this vacancy. Um, if you'd like to begin with just a little uh, um, summary of uh, your interest and experience. Mm -hmm. um, I am definitely interested in uh, serving on the planning board because I've been to several of their meetings and been you know, very interested in what they do and the development of the town and how they can the planning board can affect and direct some of the processes and the, um, the progress that the town is going through. Uh, I think the town is in actually a really good position to make some big differences and some big changes in a really positive way, and I definitely want to be a part of that. Okay, great. I'm going to start with a couple of common questions from the planning board. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the planning board will follow up with specific questions after the board board can ask their common questions. Um, could you talk about the experience that you have that, the, that would benefit the planning board? Um, I think as a business owner in downtown uh, Northborough, I think having some of the experience with working with the different departments of the town, the Board of Health, the building department, and uh, fire department, I think that I've had some, some, some experience on trying to navigate through some of the, the systems that we have in this town. Um, working on a downtown area, I also think that I've had a, I hopefully had a good impact on some of the decisions that I've made to try to bring people into the downtown area and, and have businesses with our now moving towards a master plan and having some, some impact on that. And I also feel that I also have a lot of people who do come because of the business and talk to me about what they do and don't like. And, you know, I think I can provide a good asset to be a liaison from what the people in town are looking for as a sense of community, but also how to balance that with some of the things that we have to work with within the town. Do you mind sharing what your business is downtown? <laughs> it's a little cafe right next to the library called Say La Vie Bistro. Um, so, to what capacity have you followed the master plan process, whether it's meetings or the public forums, surveys, and I I've seen you there, so I know you've been there. But <laughs> part of that, um, if you have any, do you have any key observations you'd like to share about either the plan itself or just goals or recommendations that you've seen? Um, I think the plan is extremely comprehensive. It, it is very detailed, um, and. Um, the meetings were on the very tedious side, so I'm glad that other people are doing that part of it. Um, I think that hopefully what I'm what I brought to the town does bring elements of the master plan into the picture, and I do think that um, that that's something that we would like to see a little bit more of is how to help help businesses and downtown areas work through the master plan. Now this one is related to um, balancing the concerns of abutters against the property rights of an applicant to develop their property in accordance with the zoning bylaws. So I know you've attended planning board meetings and when yes. you see abutters come and you see, you know, try to implement the zoning bylaws, how, how, do you, how would you balance that? I think it really has to depend on that specific circumstance. and. Um, you know, are you, are you talking about getting a, like a special variance or a special permit? Yes, yeah, say if a, if a butters came and said, we don't want this, and you know, a developer says, yes, I'd like to build this. How do you balance that com as it relates to the, and so that you're in accordance with zoning bylaws? Mm -hmm. you, you definitely would have to be aware of what the zoning bylaws are and how they affect uh, a, nor uh, a number of other people because certainly other situations would also come up that could be similar, and they'd say, well, you accept it in this one, so you have to accept it in this one. So you have to be, number one, consistent 
with how you present that, but also keep in balance with what the abutters are concerned about and what the uh, developer is looking to put forth. And sometimes you have to collaborate and sometimes you have to compromise and, and make the best of both. Or sometimes you just have to say, no, that's not gonna work to somebody and be really consistent and be confident in, in how you're presenting it and hopefully have regulations and bylaws to back that up. Okay, thank you. That's it for the common questions from the planning board. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hey. Here comes the board of select. <laughs> so, uh, and I have some nuts and bolts questions that I ask mm -hmm. all applicants. Um, you've been a town resident for how long? 27 years. 27, okay. And how many, uh, how many evenings of town meeting would you estimate you've attended in that mm, period of time? Three to four. Does that count when it goes into the extra night? <laughs> uh, each individual that night. Like seven. I'm, I'm counting each individual night. That's seven, night. yeah. Uh, total of seven? You no. Say? Oh, <laughs> okay. And how many town elections have you voted in as a resident? I believe all of them, yeah. Um, and what prompts you to volunteer at this time and why the planning board as opposed to other vacancies that we have on other boards and committees in town? I am doing one other vacancy as well. But um, one of the, it, it's something I have been thinking about for a number of years as far as being more involved with what's going on with the town and the different boards and <coughs> agendas. So after I opened my business, I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to commit much time to doing anything else but working at the business. And um, it's now come to a point where we're a little bit more settled momentarily and I feel that I can, I can commit some more time to really working with some of the different committees and boards and agendas <coughs> of the town. And I actually had a really good time doing it when I ran for board of select person, and I really liked being involved. I felt that that was something that was very gratifying. Great. Thank you. And that actually probably covered my next question, which was acknowledging there is a very substantial time commitment in and out of the meetings mm -hmm. to be properly prepared. And um, this appointment is for the remainder of a vacated term and the seat will be up for election in one year. If appointed to this position, do you intend to stand for election next year? I think that would be hard to answer that question at this time. I would prefer if that's something that once I'm, if I am appointed, I would certainly reconsider that. Okay. Uh, it's not a <coughs> predetermined intent at this point. Not predetermined, okay. no. Um, what's your understanding of the role of the planning board? I think, well, the role of the planning board is to work with the different departments and the different committees in um, the prog progress and development of the town and moving it forward following the town regulations and the town development and the future um, strategy of how the town balances industrial, commercial, residential needs and, and financial um, financial options. Okay. And what are your what is your understanding of the roles um, as they relate to the planning board of say the zoning board of appeals? Ideally they work together in order to have implementation of the regulations and the town bylaws. So that sometimes if there is a disagreement, if there is a a, a confusion or a, a question on a, a specific plan or project that they can resolve it either with zoning bylaws and regulations or maybe um, come to an agreement with what would be the best outcome for that particular uh, presentation. Okay. Um, have you previously served on a zoning related board? No, no. I have not. Have you ever appeared as a petitioner before a zoning board or a zoning board, I'm sorry, planning board or zoning board of appeals? I believe I have, yeah. Okay. Have you ever offered input at a public hearing on a matter before a planning board or ZBA? Uh, yep. Uh, have you ever offered input at town meeting on a zoning related warrant article? Not town meeting, no. Okay, thank you. Um, what other, unlike our other candidates, um, you're not already uh, a member of a board that relates to this to this matter. Um, mm -hmm. What preparation or research have you done um, in order to become familiar with the operation of the planning board, the bylaws, et cetera? I think that having attended a number of the different planning board meetings for the last six months, mm -hmm. 
that that's part of the preparation that I've done. I've also spoken to uh, a lot of different people from different towns mm -hmm. on planning boards in order to <clears throat> in order to get an idea of what their jobs are and what they, they what they bring and what we can expect if um, you know we come up with some similar situations that might be questions problems. So I think it's important to you know understand that you can you can get the answers to some of your questions within the boards and within the people in your town but it's also not a bad idea to go outside and see how other towns have handled some similar things with growth and development and and residential or commercial mm -hmm. um, um, have you looked at online resources such as mass.gov website uh, mass journal laws concerning uh, zoning or the town oh, website? Specifically, uh, the town website, town yes. Website, I was charter, say. and code. Yeah, there's a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, I would hope to get some help on that. Reviewed the, um, the planning board's past agendas, meeting minutes, yes. videos. Uh, how about the master plan? Um, Ashley, you've been an attendee at a number of the meetings, so yeah. I imagine you're familiar with that. It's very comprehensive. Um, spoken with uh, planning board members or ZBA members just mm -hmm. about the nature of the job or what they do? Yes, what the commitment is yeah. and why they came on board and why they stay or what their, mm -hmm. what their, uh, what their assets and values are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And spoken with planning department staff or other town staff? On occasion, yeah. Okay. Either related to a specific situation that has come up in a, a project sure okay. mm -hmm. thank you um, are you familiar with the current members of the planning board and in what ways would you complement broaden strengthen or diversify the collective experience and expertise of the board I think yes I am familiar with them and I think that bringing in a, a newer perspective or a perspective that comes from somebody who has a downtown business who is very uh, present in, in the town and the community, um, I definitely can bring in a perspective that a lot of people, I think, would, would benefit from and an asset to that. Mm -hmm. And the master plan is nearing completion and in the coming year, uh, we'll transition to the next phase of planning and implementation. In what way do you see yourself being able to contribute to that transition? Uh, hopefully, as a member of the planning board, you're taking those elements of the master plan into consideration when you're making some of the decisions that are going to be going forward to bring that town, to bring the town into position to follow the master plan. Um, and, or be able to take a look at some of the elements of the master plan and maybe do it in sections or stages to see that, that it's, it's so comprehensive that we have to do it in smaller bits and pieces. But I think that ideally you wanna have some collaboration between the two, the, the two pieces so that you can you can make this progress move forward um, sorry two more questions. <laughs> uh, what what would be your primary goal for the planning board to address uh, I would actually love to see the town be a little members of the town and community be more aware of some of the things that the planning board does so that when there are uh, things like subdivisions that come up that people might be interested in knowing what's going on that there's a way to communicate that and to be aware that these are things that are happening in this town um, I think communication is a good thing to have with uh, between the planning board and the, the community thank you and one final question. Uh, considering the development boom in Worcester, which that city is currently experiencing, are there any issues that Northborough should be thinking about? I, would, I, I think Worcester is doing a really good job in some areas of redeveloping and revitalizing certain areas of it. There are areas in Worcester that I would not have gone to or for 25 years because they just really weren't, weren't uh, that appealing and seeing what they've done in those areas, I'd love to see that that's something that we, we definitely have some, some buildings in town that I think would benefit from some of the revitalization, some areas. Um, and I'd love to see that that's something that we could, would look to include in our master plan. Um, I, you know, I do think that, that going forward is a great 
direction, obviously, for the town, but sometimes you have to also look and see what the town already has and what you can work with historically to bring that into the picture. And I think that that's an important part of the, the overall health of the town is, is the history, but also the future. And to pull those two together in a balance that is, I think, uh, progressive and beneficial for the town. Great, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, that concludes the Board of Selectmen's standard questions. Carrie, would you like to open it up to the planning board members? Yes. So the planning board will ask follow-up questions more specific. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with Michelle. Do you have any questions that you'd like to ask? No, thank you. You answered them all. Thank, thank you. you. Amy? Yeah, thank you. Jason have a lot of questions. But I, <laughs> I was just going to reiterate, if you did join the planning board, there is a big time commitment where before a meeting we read through the application, the minutes to read, we read through the zoning bylaw. And I just want to make sure that you were okay with the time Yes. For a and honestly, to your point, I can see that you guys come in with a lot of information because there's a lot that isn't rediscussed at the t so you're efficient when you're doing it. And and I can tell you come in with your homework done. And I think that that, that presents very well. Okay. And you feel you're at the time. I do. Yeah. And we do get a lot of support from Kathy and engineering. <laughs> Anthony, anything else? I do have one more question. Yeah, sure. Um, with regards to training, so if some of the newer members, I know Carrie has participated in all of this, usually we have the opportunity to participate in. Kathy offers us um, opportunities to go with the Central Mass Planning Committee. We can take courses and learn more right. in depth. Would you be able to do that? Absolutely. Yeah, so they go throughout the year, and it's just a great opportunity for people to learn. Yeah. Well, I always wondered how you guys got to know all the things that, that you come to these meetings with because it is very, very comprehensive. I do have actually one additional question. In terms of, uh, you talked a lot about starting a business in town. So uh, one component of the master plan is economic development. Is there anything in the field of economic development that you think you can bring, whether it's perspective or if you thought about things that would, the town could benefit from, just, just from that regard? I think about things all the time. Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, and I would love to see this town have a lot more vibrancy in the downtown economic aspect. And I'm, I'm always talking to people in different towns about what they're doing with their towns. Look at what Hudson's done, you know? Areas of Framingham and, and even uh, Clinton's moving along, downtown, the, the areas in Worcester. What are they doing and what, how can we benefit from what they're doing? So yes, I'm always thinking about what, what we can be doing with some of the different areas in town, whether it's parking, whether it's, again, older buildings getting new life, whether it's reusing a space that, that uh, either is underutilized or uh, creating an appealing visual by, you know, scenic area. So I'm, I'm always thinking about that. Great, thank you. All set? Uh, members of the board, any questions? Leslie. Thank you for coming in, Millie. You're welcome. Uh, you mentioned, obviously, several times that you're a business owner. Mm -hmm. um, can you delve a little bit more specifically into what attributes you bring to the table being a business owner? Be a little bit more specific about that, what you have to offer in that area. Sure, sure. I, as a business owner in the hospitality industry, you're working with a lot of the different elements that are already present in the town whether it's uh, building codes, whether it's inspections, health inspections, uh, fire inspections, safety. Um, so I'm managing those. I'm, you, there's a lot of that has gone on to get to that point where I'm comfortable managing those. But it's also dealing with the, the public and <coughs> people that have different expectations of, of what their experience is going to be. And sometimes you're, you're you know, collaborating with with a, a customer to come to a better resolution than maybe what they had or what they expected. But you're also, you know, I'm in a professional environment where all the time I am I'm on stage and I'm present and, and people are evaluating pretty much everything I do from the time they walk into the door to the time they leave. And hopefully they've had a good experience. So I think sometimes somebody might be dissatisfied, but I think I'm pretty good about 
trying to make it work so that everybody can have the same understanding. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Julianne, I'm sorry, I can't, I, I, Leslie is <laughs> obstructing her. Yeah. So. so in the hospitality <laughs> venue, uh, what are some needs that you're seeing that, that um, the public might be asking for? Some, some needs. Like meeting spaces. Oh, yes, yeah. So I get a lot of requests to do things like um, either meetings or uh, events and um, communions, showers, weddings, things like that. So public meeting spaces, yes. A lot of people are looking for that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the board? Uh, hearing none, I think we're complete here. Uh, Millie, would you like to, uh, any final comments or statement of interest or anything? I have really good coffee. I bring good, really good things. <laughs> uh, no, I really, I thank you very much for the opportunity to, to sit here and um, answer some questions and hopefully I've been able to, I think, present a, as an asset to what would be the, the planning board. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you Thank very you much. Mark. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi. Turn this off, please. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> Brad, did you want to introduce yourself and summarize your interest, experience, and qualifications? Sure. Uh, well, thank you for having me tonight. Uh, start off. Uh, my name is Brad Blanchett, uh, 6 Ronnie Terrace in Northborough. Uh, I have been a resident um, almost my entire life, 33 years total. Uh, I grew up here, graduated Algonquin class in 99, and moved back here in 2009, and have been here ever since. I have two young children, uh, age 7 and 5. So. Last day of school is today, so kindergarten and third grade next year. Um, <coughs> uh, what else? What else? So I've been on zoning board since 2011, three different capacities. First as an alternate, and then as a regular member, and then since this past August, uh, the chairman. And uh, the main reason for the interest in planning board is um, I have a good understanding of the zoning bylaws, and it feels like as a zoning member, I'm more reactive to the bylaws where the planning board, I think, is more proactive. And just seeing different applications coming through, um, all different shapes and sizes and, and things like that, I wanna have a little more influence or roll up my sleeves um, as far as um, having input on bylaws moving forward. Being here my entire life, I really wanna <coughs> hold that line between still keeping that small town feel but also being smart about developing Northboro for the future. Um, I have no intentions of leaving anytime soon. Uh, we're just, I'm working with the planning department to do an addition, so uh, it was an option of moving or not moving, we're doing the addition and we're staying here. So that is my summary. Okay, great. I'm going to start with some common questions from the planning board. So you talked a little bit about your zoning experience is there anything specific that you wanted to talk about that you think any specific experience that you think would benefit the planning board yeah that's a good question um, well, a couple things recently actually one was uh, 329 to 333 West Main Street um, going from one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use and definitely had a lot of balls juggling in the air um, trying to think about the property as it stands today but thinking about the future as far as the master plan and does it fit in the future. And really wrestling with um, having a business in there full time right now, re regardless, I mean, or instead of having it vacant, sitting there vacant like it is today. And kind of wrestling with that and am I thinking just very tactically, just I want a business in there right away or am I willing to wait and make the right decision for the town long term? And we went with that and took in input from the neighbors, took an input from town staff as well, um, in, in incorporating all of that. Um, so that was a, a big decision, and I know we've been talking about as a town um, tweaking that bylaw. 
another bylaw um, I've been wrestling a lot with are the duplexes. So the duplexes, I think, um, the way it's written today, it has, it's well-intentioned to have affordable housing in Northboro. Northboro is already at that 10% threshold for uh, 40B. And lately, and in front of the zoning board and, and, and with planning board recently, because planning board took over those applications, I feel as though um, the town of Northboro, I don't, for lack of a better term, has been taken advantage of. They've been, these duplex have gotten out of control. They're not necessarily affordable anymore. We had one applicant saying, 2,500 square feet per unit is a good starter home, or it's good for empty nesters, which even with my addition is I'm not going to 2,500 square feet. Um, so I just think the way the bylaw is written today, it needs to be fixed, but not going from one extreme to the other, saying duplexes or we're just going to ban duplexes. There has to be a happy medium, um, and we need to have all different types of housing for all different types of, of people in the town of Northboro. Um, so those are the two things um, I think that I can bring to the table right away. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so to what capacity have you followed the master plan process? So whether it's meetings, public forums, surveys, and, um, well, I guess I'll let you answer that first. So the master plan, to be honest, um, it hasn't gotten a lot of attention in the zoning board meetings up until about a year and a half ago. Uh, when my colleague Fran, who's, who also uh, is applying for this role, has done a fantastic job of giving us updates on the master plan. I know as far as for special permits, it's one of seven different criteria. Uh, but lately, just starting to revisit the master plan that was written, I believe, in 1997 versus what's being put together now, um, it's starting to come up more in discussions. And as um, a volunteer member of zoning or planning board, uh, I think it's in our best interest to bring that to the conversation, bring that to the table every single time. Um, whether we agree or disagree with it, this is the vision. Um, all these workshops, all the time that staff and volunteers have put in, we, we, I think we need to do a better job of following that um, moving forward. So, um, thank you. Yeah. Do you have any um, key observations either about the plan in general or just the current goals and recommendations that you sort of, that stuck out to you or? Um, yeah, some of the things, um, I mean, obviously, downtown is top of mind. Like trying to trying to be friendly to developers to in, in, encourage more development in downtown, make it more walkable. Um, obviously, are the two that come to mind. Um, and some of the other things I don't, to be honest, I don't find too important is um, incorporating uh, like shuttles and buses to get people to trains and things like that. I honestly, I that's not of importance to me. I think there's other things and better, bigger and better things that the town of Northbrook can do. The walkability uh, definitely was one for me. Got it. Um, this, I think, you touched upon a little bit in one of your examples, but just to ask it more uh, directly, so how would you balance the concerns of abutters against the property rights of an applicant to develop their property in accordance with the zoning bylaws? Um, good question. We did have an application last month talking about this. Uh, the uh, zoning side setback is 15 feet. And the way the house was built was exactly 15 feet from someone's front door. And this uh, applicant wanted to um, add a third garage. There was really no hardship. He already had two garages. He can easily put a shed in the backyard. And there was an opportunity, albeit a little more difficult, uh, to do an addition on the other side of his house and to simply just encroach on someone else's 15-foot setback uh, we decided um, against it and just basically because that's the bylaw that's how it was interpreted there was really no hardship at all he just wanted a third garage um, I mean if there was a hardship and he came to the table with, with multiple criteria of, of why he needed this um, then we would have thought differently about it but um, the bylaws are written the way they are and that's the zoning board's job is to enforce the bylaws the way they're written and that, that's that's it really Okay, thank you. That's it for the common questions for the planning board. Hi, Brad. <laughs> um, I have some nuts and bolts questions that I ask of all the applicants. Okay. Um, so you've been a resident 33 years, is that right? Just about, yeah. I moved here when I was 1984. I was like three years old, so I didn't really contribute sure. much yeah. early on. But and was there a gap was, in there for school or for? Uh, four years uh, at college. I uh, came back quite often for work, and then I lived in Natick for two years. Oh, there, okay. So. Yep, okay. Yeah. Six, yeah. Yep. 
33 hours ish. Uh, how many evenings of town meeting do you would you estimate you've attended during your residency? Um, since I moved back here in 2009, um, this was 2019, probably seven or eight town meetings I've been to since I moved okay. back. Uh, yeah. And how many town elections have you voted in over that period of time? I want to say almost all of them. Uh, admittedly, I did not uh, vote this year. I was out of town on business, but I always make a point. I vote try to every single election I possibly can. Uh, yep. Whether it's the town election in May or if it's a state or, or, or right. federal. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Um, and uh, I think you've essentially answered this. Uh, next question was what prompts you to volunteer at this time? Why the planning board rather than? But I think you've made the point reactive stance of the zoning board versus proactive stance of the planning board and wanting to have that more proactive. Exactly. Yeah, that was the best way I could describe it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's obviously a time commitment that you're well familiar with. Uh, yes. This appointment is for the remainder of the vacated term, which is one year, and the seat will be up for election in spring 2020 yeah. next year. If appointed, do you intend to stand for election? Yes, I do. Yes. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm not going anywhere. I've enjoyed volunteering for this town, so I have no intentions to step down or, or remove myself at any time. And um, in consideration of your current seat on the ZBA, if you're appointed now, what do you see as being the disposition of your ZBA seat at this time? Um, that's a good question. That's something I, I've thought about. I know technically I can do both. Um, I don't think I would do that. Um, I know we have two capable alternates. Um, one who was formerly on planning board and one who's been uh, an alternate or a regular member of the uh, zoning, zoning board um, over the past few years, so I, I would resign. Uh, but I believe that uh, the zoning board is in capable hands, a lot of senior uh, leadership there. Um, and we also have uh, brought on a younger member as well, so there's a good mix of, uh, of looking at, the, I don't know, long-term future versus the short-term future, I guess you could say, but also thinking about the past, the historic small town feel. Yep. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and what's your, well, you've, you've expressed this already um, in your statements. Um, have you ever appeared as a petitioner before a planning board or ZBA yourself? I have not, no. Uh, ever offered input at a public hearing uh, of a zoning board or PBA? Uh, have you ever offered input at town meeting about a zoning related matter? One of the matters, uh, yes. Yeah, I think it was in 2011. It was when um, the uh, business east, we voted to uh, abolish um, mixed use with uh, the uh, residential mm -hmm. incorporated in it. That was, I think that was 2010. Somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah, it's yeah, early, yeah, it was early on. I mean, yeah. That's one of the things that really prompted me to get involved. Uh, okay, okay. Um, uh, preparation research, your experience on ZBA over this period of time uh, speaks to all of this. Um, are you familiar with the current members of the planning board? Yes, I am. And in what ways would you complement, broaden, strengthen, or diversify the collective experience and expertise of that board? Uh, great question. Um, I know the planning board now, um, for lack of a better term, is I, I guess a little more junior than the members that I currently work with on zoning board. Um, so I think um, bringing a little more experience um, to the planning board and really being able to look at it from the other side of the fence, looking at it from the, a zoning board's perspective and, and, and bringing input of Here's the types of applications we're getting. Um, also, the lifelong residency, looking at the, again, the small town feel. I keep going back to the small town feel versus um, being, trying to be as um, friendly to developers as possible to look at the long-term growth of North Brown. Um, I think those are, are some of the things um, I can bring to the table. Also, um, I can't speak for Mr. Zaiton, but I do have two young kids at Peasley School. I know. Um, Ms. Peretsky and Ms. Martin, I have children that are older, but bringing that type of perspective as far as um, developments that could impact class sizes and things like that. Great, thank you. Um, the master plan is nearing completion and in the coming year we'll transition to the next phase of planning and implementation. 
in what way do you see yourself being able to contribute to that transition? Um, I think just now, just even just working with Fran um, and thinking about the the plan that's gone through for the last two years, um, I really don't think my my first part of my term on ZBA. I didn't really hear the master plan come up that often, to be honest. And now, um, just because we're working on the new master plan, it's gotten a lot of attention, and I'm really taking that into account when making a decision. It's one of the seven part criteria um, for special permits, and incorporating that into decisions. Um, and it should be weighted just as heavily as any other. It shouldn't be the whole only, um, only factor in the decision uh, but definitely giving some um, thought to it I think the master plan that was done in 97 is kind of maybe fallen by the wayside a little bit and was disregarded and so sure. now it's starting to come to a head and people are like well if we weren't thinking about it then why what's the point now but um, need to take that into account because it's a great mix of people for that um, town staff, volunteers like us, as well as the residents. So I think all that's important. Uh, what do you see as being the primary goal for the planning board to address? Um, looking at the, uh, the um, developments, the industrial developments, trying to rezone those. I know uh, just looking back uh, historically, uh, the zoning for industrial and commercial purposes haven't really been touched upon too much lately. So I know that's a big project uh, coming up. Um, as far as looking at uh, the duplexes and signage around town, having more conformity um, between the zones. I know we re did a bunch of rezoning in 2009. Um, so things that are are now considered pre-existing non-conforming or, or um, just things of that nature. I think we need to start building more conformity um, within the town and um, start to have everything looking more uniform. Yeah. And finally, uh, considering the development boom in Worcester, which that city is currently experiencing, are there any issues that Northborough should be thinking about? Um, that's a great question. I mean, I'm excited about the Tucker Red Sox moving there. It's <laughs> nice and close. Um, <laughs> But I think uh, with that, with that boom, um, I think Northborough is even more attractive town um, for residents moving to Worcester. I know it's kind of a grind. And I know people that go from Northborough to Boston, but Worcester is a, a much easier alternative to get to. We have 290 uh, that I don't think uh, I think we can leverage a little bit more, um, and um, start thinking not towards the east but more towards the west, um, as, as in terms of whether it is. Um, different partnerships with, with farmers markets, breweries, uh, fundraisers with the towns, I mean with the teams there, the, uh, the railers, the, the Worcester Red Sox. Uh, I, I think it's a good opportunity for us. Thank you very much. That concludes the standard questions. Carrie? Yes. So I'm going to open up for the planning board to ask more specific questions. Okay. So I'll start with Michelle again. Would you, do you have any questions? So I, I have one question. This is my first time meeting you, although I think I've probably been to a ZBA meeting where I saw you. Um, so, as I read your application, there was one paragraph that stood out for me because I know you've been on the DBA for 11 years, and often on the planning board, um, we do reference the master plan from 1997 and try to, you know, implement that in our decisions or go back to it when we're talking with applicants. Um, but in it, um, and Amy's one of our biggest advocates for this, we'll often go back to the DBA and, and say the DBA letters back and forth about what you consider this or you know, if you have concerns about this. And I know that you made um, a comment that you felt that there were a lot of loopholes or work that needed to be done on the planning board as you've seen in the 11 years. Um, I was just curious why we hadn't heard back from the DBA or you over the 11 years on some of those concerns. As the planning board is constantly going to the DBA, but we haven't heard anything back. And maybe that's a relationship that needs to improve, but yeah. we always are sending letters to the DBA saying, you know, here's what we think of an applicant our feedback or their concerns about this and um, but I noticed this this sort of mm -hmm. just stood out for me sure. out of all the other ones no one commented on it but you did comment on it and I was just wondering curious why we hadn't heard back from you or other members of the ZBA over those 11 years on the loopholes or concerns that you were sure. addressing. 
Yeah, that's a great question. But first off, I was, I've been there nine years, not eleven, oh, okay. but I've been there since twenty eleven. Okay. That's what you think of. Um, I think because um, I, I really deferred to the senior members quite a bit uh, early on, especially I was an alternate. I, I wasn't really a voting member for uh, the, the first three years, and really started to get comfortable over the last three years. And and now um, I do want to start getting involved. I know that's why you haven't heard in the past. Um, that's a great question. I, I just don't think it was um, things that I think were an opinion for me, or I thought they were loopholes. I didn't really hear too much from other people. So maybe if I've heard from more residents, if I heard from more members of, of planning or board of selectmen, maybe I would have spoken up. Um, but now, looking forward, looking at the master plan, it's something I want to be more vocal about. And that's, I think that's the best answer I can give you. But yeah, no, it's a great question. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, if it's something now I'd like to do. I know uh, Ms. Paretsky comes in all the time uh, to our meetings, and so I think opening up that line of communication I think is fantastic, and I think we need to keep building on that moving forward because there wasn't much earlier on, at least in my experience. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Michelle? No. No. Okay. Amy, do you have any questions? <laughs> Okay. Great. All right. Great. Members of the Board of Selectmen, questions. Tim. Thanks for coming in, Brad. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> you currently sit um, as a chair for the ZBA? Yes. Um, can you just talk a bit about your, um, your leadership style from sitting in that chair? Um, how you go about resolving conflicts, disagreements that you have on the board about things that come uh, before the board? And then also about building any consensus that might be needed around certain opinions moving forward and mm -hmm. how you handle those things as sitting in the chair on the, on the ZBA. Sure, sure. Yeah, so one of the things uh, I, I make a point to do is make sure everyone's at least um, is heard. Everyone's opinion is heard. I know in even some cases talking to other zoning board members and I guess pointing out and like, okay, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Um, just I want to get consensus among the entire board and I know um, we're not on the same page every single time uh, I'll always remember one of these collaboration trainings I took um, at my work it's called the fist of five and you raise your hand with five fingers and everyone's completely on board one hit one finger means you're not you're adamantly against it and if we can f get into that two three four range you know sometimes I think we can find a good ground um, but just to make sure everyone on the board is heard, but also, especially with that, um, um, I think it was 229 to 233 or 339 to 333, I can't remember, but the, um, the, there's the old Zecco building case. And I just get it based on getting the letters and, and just keeping an ear on social media, I knew it was gonna be a very hot topic to go over and just really just laid it out for the entire audience, saying, here's how it's gonna go. The board's gonna, the applicant is gonna talk to the board. The board will ask questions. I will open it up. Everyone has to raise their hand. We're not gonna start yelling and things like that. And I, looking at the audience, people's eyes were kind of like, whoa, okay. So I just immediately kept things under control. But at the end, everyone walked away, whether they agreed or disagreed with the decision, everyone felt heard. And at least their opinions were sought. And just, based on that, just coming to a consensus with the board. Uh, but just laying out how it works. And so, because sometimes it can become a free for all. I know in this town, just watching the selectmen and the planning boards, our meetings aren't like that, but you see these things on the news where it can just get out of hand in a hurry. Um, and so just laid out the, the ground rules of, of how we're gonna do it. I said, everyone has an opinion, everyone can be heard. So they don't have to start jumping out and yelling at things to us. Okay. Any other, uh, Tim, why don't you go ahead and follow up? Uh, just to, to follow up on, on Michelle's question of, about um, communication between the ZBA and the planning board, and you just mentioned that the first few years that you were on the ZBA that you were kind of learning mm -hmm. and, and just kind of fitting in, I get it, I'm new, I yeah. completely understand where, where you're coming from. Um, do you see that same sort of, of I don't want to say hesitancy, but learning curve when you come onto the planning board, or do you think you'll be able to move now that you have the experience and the confidence from ZBA, moving into like a, a fully engaged member of the planning board from, from day one without having to have that year, two year 
Yeah. Confidence building learning curve. Great question. Yeah, no, I, I feel as though, and that's one of the things I thought about before applying is, can I jump right in and contribute? And the answer is yes, uh, just based on the knowledge of the, our current zoning bylaws uh, and just keeping an eye and ear on what the planning board has been doing. Uh, I, I watch the videos on YouTube so I can get the, the Cliff Notes version um, of that. And so that was one of the things too. I didn't want, want to just join the board and just sit back. I wanted to be able to jump in and engage and I feel very confident I can do that. Leslie? Yeah, um, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Um, two phrases that you mentioned, uh, one is ZBA perspective and also active versus reactive. Um, if you could explain that a little bit more and also be more specific about what you think you've done with the ZBA and how it would benefit the planning board. Um, yeah, good question. So the, the active versus the reactive or the ZBA perspective is, first with the ZBA perspective, um, the bylaws are written the way they're written. Whether I like it or not or I disagree or agree, those are written and we have to abide by them. And, and so um, sometimes you have to kind of take the uh, emotion out of it um, or the, the NIMBY, right, not in my backyard perspective. Um, even though you don't want it in my backyard, but it, it is what it is, the way it's written. Um, and the active versus reactive, I, I feel as though moving on to the planning board, um, just roll up my sleeves a little more as far as helping maybe close loopholes like Ms. Gillespie was talking about. And, and um, based on my perspective on ZBA, things I feel, I feel as though are taken, maybe we, they've, our bylaws have been taken advantage of or things but bringing that opinion to the table. Obviously, I'm not gonna come in and say, this is how it should be done, uh, but just bringing my experience and my expertise on what I've been hearing at the ZBA uh, to planning board and helping tweak, change bylaws, obviously has to go through town meeting um, as well. So the whole town has to agree with it, but bringing that to um, the table. Okay. Thank you. I just wanna go back to, if um, you are appointed, that you would resign from the ZBA? Yes. Thank you. Uh, and any others, Julianne? Thank you. So, as Northboro approaches build out, how what what can the planning board do to um, be kind of proactive about that? That's a great question. Um, I really don't have a good <laughs> good answer for that, to be honest. Uh, I, I guess we just need to. Um, start looking at any and all options um, as far as um, uh, possibly doing some re rezoning, industrial rezoning, maybe looking at a mixed use here or there, um, but also keeping in mind uh, the traffic, um, the, uh, the school sizes and, and things like that, or just not look directly at uh, residential taxpayers as a revenue generator looking at some of these other spaces um, the these big industrial buildings over in Bartlett by the Marlboro uh, line by Dewey Pyle and FedEx I mean that's a, a good spot for development I think because in my opinion I don't see a lot of tr a lot of those trucks going into downtown but Mass Pike Route 9 495 are right in that corner and then so starting to look at those uh, organizations in those areas 290 is another example Mr. Pearl was talking about uh, Worcester and uh, there's a lot of, of space up there um, I just was talking with a consultant who used to work in Iron Mountain he said the Iron Mountain building up there is one of the second biggest buildings uh, distribution centers in North America and I don't hear a peep from residents I don't hear any complaints about that building it's right next to 290 and so looking at things like that I think it's the way to go thank you sure. any other questions from the board None. thank you very much Brad would you like to make any just final comment final statement um, um, no no thanks. <laughs> I just want to thank you for having me. These are all great questions, um, and it definitely took uh, a lot of thought um, into um, making this decision. Um, but I, I, I love being a part of this town. I love volunteering, so that's why I want to just continue that. So thank you. Thanks, thanks very Brad. much. Thank Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. 
so we will move into del deliberation. And I think we'll start, we start with the planning board. I would say why don't you go ahead and start with the members of the planning board, Chair, and we'll follow up. Okay. Or should do we, we want to go by applicant or just in general deliberation? Um, it might be simpler just to go member by member and ask for their general sense of the applicants. And, okay. and certainly, I mean, we can certainly take each one in turn, each applicant in isolation. Okay. Would you ask applicant? applicant by applicant? Sure. Okay. So why don't we start with Fran then? Any thoughts, pros, cons, observations? Um, I'll go first. Um, so I've worked with Fran over the years. I, I do know that she um, has a lot of experience. Um, I enjoyed everybody telling us how young our board was. It does not put my friends to fit terms on. But um, actually, I was thinking about that. And the you know when you're on the board that long, you have a lot of history. and. You know, we've gone from Rick Leaf and jo George Cumber, who were the senior members, and there were three of us who were like under, you know, um, one or two terms. And then, likewise, when George Cumber and I were senior members, Teresa was new, Leslie was new, and Amy was new. So I don't really see that as a detriment to the board, and um, that will not be on how I will make my decision tonight. Um, but she brings a lot. I think my only concern is that she's staying on the DBA, and um, she's only here for a year, and I'm not quite sure. runs really efficient meetings, which is very knowledgeable. Um, but I do think uh, some new blood on some of the boards would be useful. I think there's some folks who have been around a long time, not that they're not useful anymore, but I think it would be great to have some new perspective and new ideas. And um, that's, that's, what we're, that's all I would think about. She's great. She does a great job. I think uh, we can see some new blood there. Um, any further comments? No. So from my own perspective, um, I agree. Uh, she obviously has great experience and is very committed. I do have a concern with um, serving on both boards for the year, not just in, uh, I mean, time commitment alone. I'm, obviously, she's well aware what the commitment is, but uh, I'm not sure it's healthy to have someone sit on both boards. Um, obviously, the, she made a good point that the decision is divided between five members on each board. but. Um, I don't know. That that um, is a sticking point for me a little bit that I, I struggle with in that perspective. Um, otherwise, certainly well qualified and has done a, a great job in service to the town. So that was my one main concern. And I didn't find, I agree, I didn't find um, experience to be a problem. I feel like I'm, obviously Anthony and I are the most new to the board, but we attend, you know, we've gone to trainings, of, I don't know, probably like seven trainings in the last year. Every time it's, I mean, we haven't exactly um, sat still. So I think we jumped in and and really pushed forward to learn and learn the role. And uh, I don't think that that's a big issue for us. So that was my thoughts on that. Do you want to then deliberate for a friend or? Yeah, why don't we have the members of the Board of Selectmen call it Julia. Why don't you start and we'll come down the line. Okay. 
So undoubtedly, Fran is very experienced and has done a lot for the town. Um, and she is an independent thinker. I've seen her at meetings, and she's, um, she, she does see both sides. Uh, my biggest concern is that she, she would like to stay on the zoning board, and I think that there are two separate boards for a reason. I don't know the intricacies of both, but I think that having different people on each board is probably a plus. And if there's someone else who could fill that role, then um, that's, that, that's where I would go. Leslie? Um, I think Fran would be terrific. I think that if anybody can do both boards, it would be her. I think that because of the serious nature of your board, I think that we need the absolute best person for the job. And I, at this point, feel that Fran has so much to offer. I think that uh, having worked with her on the Board of Selectmen, she has an amazing character and an incredible amount of integrity. And she does not succumb to um, what, do you, what are people going to think of me if I say something a certain way? She's, I can absolutely attest to that. And she's absolutely a wonderful person to work with. Uh, I think she has a very reasonable outlook. And because of what she did with our board and what she's doing with the ZBA, that she could be a terrific asset for a year. And it wouldn't surprise me if she enjoys it so much that she does decide to run. So I wouldn't necessarily count her. I think she kind of alluded to may be thinking about running if it's something that she thought she could do or she enjoyed or whatever but uh, she she really is a terrific person i do frankly think that she could get away with doing both um, there are some committees where i do feel that we need to spread the wealth a little bit and and get a lot of new people involved but with the depth of what you guys do on your board i really feel like we need the absolute best person on this board so thank you thanks leslie tim um, unlike the, Leslie, when, when Fran says she's not running, um, I believe her. Um, <laughs> that's what she says, so I, t I take her for, for her word. Um, if this was a, a one-year planning board project, mm -hmm. I think Fran would be perfect. But it's not a one-year project. I think um, with two new members on the planning board, to have somebody come in for a year, get, get the, the used to work with everybody and then have them leave after a year and then have somebody else run and then have somebody else new come out. Like it, the, it would just it would add to the disjointedness of the board. Um, besides that, I think, I think Fran would be perfect for, for what the board needs at this point in time. Um, but, you know, for me, not, not running or not looking to run uh, after a year is, is, is concerning. Thank you, Don. And echoing somewhat what Tim said, um, I think Fran could bring a ton to the, the planning board. We all know that she has a wealth of knowledge and will stand up for what she believes in. But that being said, I have the concern with somebody serving on two of these committees. Um, one is to make policy, basically, and the other is to enforce it. And just somebody doing both of those committees at the same time would bother me. Um, not that. She couldn't handle it, probably, because I think she could handle it very well. But um, I think that this board will need somebody with expertise because you're coming in for a year, um, and there's no guarantees you're going to get elected after a year either. So um, I would like to see somebody come in that wants to stay and will run and hopefully maybe get elected, but at least somebody that comes in with the knowledge that they can use right now yes. instead of a learning curve. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have some similar sentiments as already expressed. Um, I think from her past experience um, and her dedicated contribution to the town in many roles, Fran Backstrand has uh, just been a, a premier citizen <laughs> for all the work that she's done to date, um, and particularly her experience in having been a member of the Board of Selectmen, served on the bylaw revisions that took place back in 2009, um, uh, the ZBA over this past period of time, and also as chair of the master plan steering committee. Um, she certainly has very, very strong credentials um, to be appointed to this position. 
I do have a similar concern about serving in both roles on the planning board and the ZBA. Um, if anyone could do it, Fran is probably the person, but I don't know that I want to put someone in the position of doing it. Um, it is a workload that's pretty substantial for the two boards. And uh, um, from the standpoint of what's in the best interest of the town, I think it may be better to partition that work between different people. Um, that said, um, Tim, you said something to the effect if this was a one-year project. As a matter of fact, that is exactly how I'm looking at this, that it's a one-year project. Whoever we appoint is going to serve for exactly one year and possibly no longer. Um, a very significant um, undertaking over this next year will be the, as I was saying, the transition of the master plan um, from approval and then for the planning board to consider how that moves forward from here. Um, so as chair of the master plan steering committee, as a one-year appointment, I think from that perspective, Fran does still have a very strong argument to make. Um, and so I think it's more my concern about having her serve in both roles on the planning board and ZBA that would cause me to pull back from that, that reference. So. <coughs> Any further comments from the planning board? No. Okay. So next we have Melly. So do you mind if I start with you, Michelle, again? Sure. Okay. Um, so one of the attributes I think Millie brings to the table is in, is diversity and in the unique experiences that you have a business owner who actually owns the building and work through getting that building built. Uh, I've only been at once when I was invited to an event there, uh, stunning the redevelopment of it. But when you talk, I've been, I'm a member of the master plan committee and every single meeting, and I think Jason and Kelly and whoever's been part of the master plan to contribute to it, the downtown is the number one focus of everyone on that committee, that discussion. And to have a business owner who interacts day in and day out with the public who has a business downtown has redeveloped a business, I think brings a lot of value to the point of view. That's what attracted to me when I read her letter. Um, I don't look at the experience because I think Kathy Jubrick is excellent with the planning board when, is she here? We're giving you kudos to Kathy. Um, advising us on the limitations and the restrictions and following the guidelines and opening our books and studying it. So she's been a great asset as well as um, our town engineer, Fred Litchfield. And everyone goes to training and constantly gets on board with it. And like I said, as, as some of the board members were coming up and saying we have a young board, you know, having been on the board for many terms, I know when the board has always only had two seasons and then three that are on for a year or so. So I don't see that as a detriment. And even if we were young, and by the way, you have two um, new members on your board that I think are doing a fine job as well. Um, Kathy always brings us in when he says, you know, you're going off or you can't do that, or that's not part of the zone. So to her attribute, you know, she's been excellent on guiding us through our meeting. So oh, while well, someone on the ZBA who is, as you said, is a reactionary, they're the one who's seeing, I don't like what the zoning is, so therefore I'm asking for a variance. That's why they go before the ZBA. Those two members have seen a lot of that. Um, I would be more apt to look for, and as Anthony said, we're always saying, can't we get new residents involved? Can't we get new people on boards? This is a person who wants to get involved, who wants to get on board, who ran for an election but didn't win, who's coming back for more. And the unique part about it is they own a business downtown that we're all talking about constantly on how we can improve downtown. So that's why I think that's a positive that I think she really brings to the table. And I'm not concerned about um, or not, you know, she's been to many planning board meetings because I've seen her there. She's been to many um, of the, the uh, master plan meetings because I've seen her there. I know there's a learning court, there's even going to be a learning court for the other two, maybe not necessarily free in as much, but it will be for Brad. I think Kathy does an excellent job of bringing everyone up to speed, so I don't really have as much concerns on that. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be hard to follow that because Michelle just said everything.
From my perspective, she actually mentioned one word that I thought was interesting, and it was um, hospitality. I think um, sometimes I look at what people have to say about the planning board. That you see comments online, and we get a lot of feedback that we're not, um, we're difficult on businesses, or we're hard to, you know, work with. And I don't necessarily think that's true, but you know, there's a, some opinions out there that um, that may be the case. And I like that thought of. Um, someone that's in the field of it and just has that um, that hospitality type approach and that there are people that come into the business and she's listening, she's got her ear to the ground and hearing what people have to say and um, it would be great to have that uh, open communication, that open loop that uh, I thought was an interesting point that she had made. But, uh, otherwise, I would, I think you guys made most of the points that I had on my list as well. Awesome. Yes. Uh, Order Selectman, uh, Julianne. So um, the one word that I love that Millie used was communication and that, they, um, that we need to make people more aware of what the planning board does, the master plan, and I, I think that that's, I, I am very much in agreement with that. I also was impressed that she's been looking at other towns and talking to other town planners. I think it's always, we don't have to reinvent the wheel with everything, so it, I, I appreciated that. And, um, and like the others have said, having a business is a town. She just has her pulse on what people are talking about and expressing they want. So I think she would add a lot to the board. Leslie? Okay, yeah, a lot of great points are being brought up, and I think Millie had a very nice interview. Um, she has a lot of uh, good experience, obviously, owning a business. I don't think I need to reiterate all that because all those points have been made. Um, I, I just, you know, I just question a little bit the, the length of time that you've been actually dedicated to the, some of the town things as far as attending town meetings and. Um, that, that sort of thing, you know, where, again, not to compare to Fran, but you know, there's a lot, long period of dedication, um, you know, and appearing at things that really don't have to be appeared at. But I do think that you do add a wonderful business perspective. Um, I think Michelle's experience, too, with her business and town, it's the same kind of thing, you know, where you talk to a lot of different people and gain a lot of perspective and comments. You hear, you, you know, you're on pulse. I think that's, that is very important. So I do think you have a lot of wonderful um, attributes as well, and uh, you would have a lot to offer, I do believe, so. Tim? Uh, I think, um, as a business owner, I think <coughs> we would add um, a lot of value from, from that point of view. Um, I think with everybody's comments about um, the master plan and looking to revitalize downtown to have somebody that's actually in business downtown would add a lot of a lot of value to the, to the board. Okay. Don. Well, and I think Millie certainly brings a lot of um, positives to the table. Um, the one thing I still am concerned with is it's a one year appointment. Um, <coughs> is no time for a real learning curve in the year. Um, a three year, uh, if you run and get a, uh, win a seat for three years, you have time to have a learning curve. Um, so I'm concerned with the fact that um, although she has a lot of knowledge about business, that she's not coming with a lot of knowledge about the bylaws in the town of Northboro. So that's my concern. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, th I think I have 
somewhat a similar sentiment to Don. I appreciate all of the <coughs> business experience and are starting a business in town. It takes quite a lot of energy and, and persistence to be able to do that and do it well. Um, and I certainly appreciate all the time she's spent over these last several months because I've been in a number of these meetings and I have seen her there at all of these meetings. Uh, so she's certainly making the effort to try to be as informed as possible. Um, that said, I, I kind of go back to the idea here that we're making an appointment for one year. We don't have any guarantees about anyone um, running for election next year um, or being elected next year. Um, <coughs> the key thing for me, I think, in part is that um, I think the responsible thing to do is to choose an applicant who has the most experience or sufficient experience to be able to hit the ground running immediately without undergoing most of that learning curve um, or being able to mitigate that learning curve very quickly um, and be able to be a constructive and productive member over this one year period. Um, we don't have any guarantees about what happens after next year's town election, whether it's the same person and they're drawing on this experience this past year or not. So I have to look at it as just this one single year. Who's the best person from among the applicants who can fill this role and, and be a fifth member not a you know four and a half member <laughs> of the of the planning board. So um, that's my perspective. Yeah. Any further comments from the planning board? Do any planning board members have concerns <coughs> about learning curve as you as being in the job and the day to day of it all? Are there any concerns with learning curve and how that? There's plenty of resources available. Tim? I just add on, on that <clears throat> when I talk about um, experience I'm not there's the nuts and bolts of it there's the knowledge aspect of it that, and I agree with you a thousand percent that there's plenty of resources out there that you can get and go and read the stuff it's it's like academics versus the real world I can go to school and learn about being a doctor but until I'm in the operating room operating on somebody it's vastly different than the, the classroom so I think there's plenty of resources out there for somebody to go and, and learn about being on the planning board, but it's quite different to actually being on the planning board, working with the four of you, working with the various people in town. And that's part of the, the learning experience that, that's actually more relevant to me than the actual knowledge of the, of the, the by, I can learn the bylaws, you know, that's just sitting down and reading and memorizing, but actually learn, like it's taken me, you know, not that I'm, you know, the perfect example, but um, I've been on the, this board for a year, and I'm just now getting comfortable working with everybody. And everybody on this board's been great. So it's, I'm not saying that you guys aren't great, but it's just that's part of the experience that I'm more referring to. Well, that's why we look for people who bring in business experience, because it's not that black and white where you know the zoning, right? You're looking at a well-rounded person. Because as we said in our next applicant, he's, a, he's been on the reactionary side, or on the proactive side, and the planning side looking for someone who's been experienced opening a business, starting a business, running a business in an area that's so in desperate need. That's why this, this individual is so valuable. That's an experience that no other applicant has brought to the table. That's more valuable than I can open up and go to traffic and look at read the zoning. The different type of experience, the planning experience, the proactive experience versus the other ones who have reactionary you know, it's a reactionary cause. I don't like the zoning, so therefore I apply for variance. They hear that part. So the Any other comments? Um, Okay, so now we will look at Brad, our final candidate. Michelle, I'll start with you again. Uh, okay, so Brad, much like um, Fran, um, has a lot of experience sitting on the ZBA side, which I just um, explained to you what the ZBA hears of experiences, and they have a certain amount of approval on their end. Um, 
as I mentioned, I, I thought it was interesting. I had never met Brad before, which I thought was interesting being so active in the master plan and the planning board that I had never seen him at meetings or um, any of the master plan meetings. I did find his comments about the loopholes, which is why I asked why he hadn't spoken up over his term. Um, and I guess right now it bothers him enough to want to speak up. Um, you know, I don't think he brings, um, I think he brings his ZBA experience, but I don't think maybe brings as much well-rounded experience as it would be from someone who owns a private business. Um, so that would be probably the only detriment. Um, he's more of a marketing sales person than he is um, in running a business. I think he's, most of his employment is in companies. So um, Ming's application was good, and it much like Brandon, um, he shows that he's worked well with Yeah, so I mean, I, um, I've watched Brad over the last year. I think he's a phenomenal job from the CBA. The has been impressed with some really tough decisions, a few tough decisions this year. And I think they performed wonderfully. And I think a lot of that was under Andrew Brad's leadership and training the division and keeping it moving in the right direction. So uh, obviously he's got a lot. Uh, yes, uh, so I would agree with a lot of those sentiments that he has done a great job on the ZBA. I've seen him, um, you know, great leadership, very strong. He gave some great, you know, I think he was the only one that really gave some examples, specific examples of his experience. So I thought that was great that he had those things uh, brewing in mind. Um, let's see, what did he mention? Well, he seemed to have some ideas too about, you know, I think he was asked a tough question about build out by Julianne, you asked at the end. and. Um, you know, at first he wasn't sure how to answer, and then he kind of picked up a little bit and thought a little bit about it, and he kind of went into his archives and, and was able to produce an answer about that. So I thought that was great as well. So a lot of experience there. He's certainly been an asset on the ZBA. Um, would be a tough loss for the ZBA, but um, he's obviously a qualified candidate. Uh, Julia? So I've been to a, a couple of the zoning board meetings, and and Brad, Brad uh, is very conscientious. He's, he's got a lot of knowledge. He's, um, he runs a, a, a beautiful meeting. I think he's very um, considered in how, how he does try to get input from everyone, and I really appreciate that about him. Um, I think he, he brings something different to the table. I think he brings more of a, of a detailed, um, a, more of a detailed focus with his zoning rather than a, a broader picture. But I, I, it's gonna be a tough decision. He's Thank you, Leslie. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, I agree with Amy. This is, this is tough because all three candidates really do bring a lot. I think they're all, seem to be wonderful people really um, to me it's a Venn diagram at this point because <laughs> where in a lot of ways Brad is in the center because he um, he would hit the ground running but he did say he would resign from the ZBA and I believe he said he would run in 2020 so that to me, you know, when you're talking about the issues that have, that have come up, it is a Venn diagram where he kind of captures what I think people are concerned about here. The, the one-year term being a, you know, 
yeah, it's nice to have um, everybody offer something, but I think if it's a one-year thing and, and he's not spending a whole lot of time trying to figure things out, the better because of the issues that you guys deal with. Um, but he does, he did make it pretty clear, I believe, toward the end of what he was saying, that he would resign from the ZBA. And I know that's a concern to everybody here. It sounds like I've got him outnumbered in that particular statement. But um, so anyway, I, I think he would be um, a good candidate for those reasons. He does bring a lot to the table. Um, <clears throat> I think Brad would do a, do a great job. One of the, Jason and I had a chance to, to work with Brad when we were nominating somebody for the, the ZBA board. And one thing that always, that I remember about Brad is that he served as an alternate on the ZBA for three years before. So he invested his own time to serve as an alternate to learn how to be a member of the ZBA before becoming a member of the ZBA. So I, I, I always found that to, to be impressive that he put in that kind of, of time and effort to, to to learn what he was going to be getting himself into. Um, and to have somebody like that that's willing to transfer that knowledge and experience to, to another board, I, th I think is, is, is very advantageous. Um, so I think he'd do a great job. I'll just second everything Leslie and Tim just had to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and I think I have a very similar uh, impression. Um, he, He's very well spoken, well organized. I have sat in on a ZBA meeting that he has chaired, and he did an excellent job in, in running that meeting. It was a difficult meeting. Um, he, uh, in my opinion, uh, as I look at this as essentially a one-year project, <laughs> uh, he seems uh, very capable uh, from his experience on the ZBA uh, in making the transition and being a productive member right out of the gate through the coming year. I'm not pinning any hopes or expectations or assumptions about what happens in next year's town election. People can say they're going to run, they can say they're not going to run. Who knows what happens between now and then to change people's minds and what they can do or, or would want to do. So uh, in my view, we have a one-year term to fill here, and uh, I think Brad would be a capable person to fill that role, whatever his intentions are after that. Um, I think, and I, I guess I would like to make one more point. Um, Michelle, you've talked about having the business perspective on the planning board. Um, I don't necessarily disagree with you in the general sense, but again, from this one year period here that we're looking at, I think in my opinion, I would prefer to see somebody with more direct experience with uh, the zoning uh, realm, bylaws, whatever, for this period of time to uh, immediately step in and work on that, to execute on the master plan in its initial phase. And this time next year at town election, whoever the candidates are and whatever their respective qualifications are, the voters can make that decision about what they want to see on the planning board at that time. So that's that's where I stand on this. Any additional comments from the planning board? I'm smart, because I'm opposite Jason in a way, because I'm with Michelle, and she was a senior member on our board, and she has perspective that, you know, that it will bring a lot to have somebody extra year to help you know. I think the comment you made was really interesting. Mm -hmm. The fact that he hasn't attended one master plan meeting and he just and hasn't given input, whereas the other two members, one chairs it and one's attended a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. So I think it's interesting that you said you want that person to carry on with the master plan in the next year, that he's never attended a master plan meeting and he's only listening to Fran who's giving updates at the ZBA meeting. To me, that means how how important was the master plan for you that we've been studying for well over a year? So. Good point. <laughs> Any more comments by the board? Okay. Um, by agreement, the chairs will now entertain nominations and the chairs themselves will not make nominations. So we will first uh, entertain nominations for the position, we'll entertain all nominations. We won't proceed to a vote on a first nomination. Board 
right now is just to understand what the sentiment of the board is and, and if the nominations kind of whittle down the field at all. Um, so, Carrie, would you like to? Oh, I'm sorry. That's for <laughs> That was my cue. Sure. Um, any Thanks. nominations from the planning board? I'd like to nominate Millie Milton. Any other nomination? Oh, any other nominations from the three awards? Okay. And from the Board of Selectmen, any nominations? Tim? Uh, I nominate Brad Blanchett. Second. Second. Brad nominated and seconded. Any other nominations? Hearing none. Okay, we're down to two. Okay. So. Uh, would you like another final round of deliberation before voting? Sure. Um, do members have any additional comments about the nominations on the floor? No, no, no I just ask for the board of selectmen to consider the amount of diversity that a business owner brings when we're trying to tackle the downtown. And I just think that um, this campaign brings a lot of value. Even if it's a one year, as Anthony said, it might be a valuable year for us because we're trying to in the master plan. I mean, and, and after one year, it's really up to the people in town who like the choice. Any comments from the board of select on either candidate? Tim? Um, I just want to echo something that you said, Jason, which is, is you know, I think our responsibility is to appoint somebody that will do the best job for the next year um, and then leave it up to the, the voters of town to elect somebody that the town that the voters want to see in that position and whether that's another business owner you know, Michelle you mentioned a, a business your business owner downtown so you know that the planning board already has that that kind of covered so it's it's um, not saying that we don't need another one I, I think that, again Millie's perspective would be great um, but to your point Jason to I see our, our responsibility to put the person in with the who can add the most value over the course of the next year. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, uh, shall we first conduct a vote on the first nomination? Sure. Okay. Do I call for the vote? Sure. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor to nominate uh, Millie Milton for the planning board vacancy. The motion has been made and seconded. All in favor of Millie Milton to fill the vacancy on the planning board, please say aye. Aye. Uh, okay. That's a vote of five with Julianne. And then, do you, do you want me to do a vote for? Uh, sure, for the purposes of. There is a second nomination on the floor that has been seconded to vote for Vlad Blanchett in the position to fill the vacancy of the planning board. All in favor, please say aye. Okay, so that's five for Millie Milton and four for Brad, Brad Blanchett. So that makes Millie the new member to fill the vacancy of the planning board until May 2020. Congratulations. I want to thank uh, Millie and all the applicants for stepping forward to fill this vacancy. We appreciate all the effort involved and the, the lengthy period of time we put you through <laughs> for these discussions. Uh, uh, we certainly appreciate it and uh, congratulations and uh, look forward to the next year. Jason, can I, can I yes. say something also? Leslie. Okay. Also, too, I want you to understand, too, that even though I personally voted for Brad, it doesn't mean that I don't think that you will do a wonderful job. You do bring a lot to the table. You did a wonderful interview, so I, I think you will be terrific. Thank you. I, I don't take it personally. Okay. Honestly, <laughs> I don't. And thank you for volunteering to go through this. Absolutely. My pleasure. And just to reiterate, as Jason and Carrie said, uh, it's up for the election. A motion to close the planning board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.
Thank you, Karen. Congratulations. See you tomorrow night. Congratulations. One, two. Look at my agenda. Stop it, it's not cold in here. It's freezing. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Thank you, Dawn. <laughs> Next up is reports. Julianne. Uh, so I just have one quick thing. Um, on June 8th, I attended a training in Sharon by the Mass Municipal Association for new and veteran selectmen. And one thing that I found interesting is that people were talking about setting measurable goals for the select boards. <clears throat> and I, I realize it's getting late tonight, now would not be the appropriate time, but would we consider having that on our agenda for next month? Uh, sure, I could put that on the agenda. Early start to the fiscal year, we can have that discussion. Excellent, thank you, and that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah. Leslie? Okay, uh, first thing is I would like to mentioned the Memorial Day Parade, and it was a wonderful event. And I would like to um, thank Jason for his speech, very nicely done. Uh, Representative Naughton was there. Um, he was able to kind of scoot in just in time. I think Jerry Burke did a great job making, uh, <laughs> thinking of some things to say until he got there. <laughs> he did a great job with that. Uh, Danielle Gregoire as well. And I would also like to thank the American Legion Post 234 and the Burroughs Cares for Troops, um, both of whom uh, organized this uh, parade this year. So thank you to them. I attended the Northborough K-8 School Committee meeting on June 5th. And on behalf of our board, I did speak during the audience sharing portion and thanked um, outgoing Superintendent Christine Johnson for her work uh, with the schools and also working so collaboratively with the town and particularly with John, I think, mm -hmm. on a lot of different issues that came up over the years. Um, I think making our lives a little bit easier with the give and take that went on between us, the town and the schools. And I think that was very important. So I didn't want to, I don't think she wanted to be thanked. She was very distressed by the fact that people were thanking her for her service, but I, th I thought it was appropriate um, while I was there to be able to say something on the behalf of the board of selectmen. Um, I'm also very excited to see that the town common work has begun. Uh, it's really funny to see all the trees down back there because I think when you drive by at first, before all the trees came down, you thought, okay, that's the lot, and it's just kind of an exaggerated look when you look at the aerial view of a plan. But now that the trees are down, you realize, wow, that's really a sizable lot. So, um, and your department has been huge with that. I mean, and it's very neatly done. Everything's very nicely piled up and, and it looks wonderful already. I see a huge difference, Scott. So I really thank you for that. That's very, very exciting. I want to thank the Town Common Committee as well. Um, I would like to, if we can, speaking of next meeting agendas, um, if we could have Fred um, come in. I've been seeing and hearing a lot of complaints about the downtown signals and the sinking of lights. I don't know if it's devolved over the last couple of years or what's happening exactly, but I'm hearing and seeing a lot of different comments again, and I know that it's obviously involving the state high the, the state uh, because of state highways but if we could have Fred come in and talk about what can be done and what if anything he knows about that I would greatly appreciate that if I may through the chair make a suggestion why don't we have Fred reach out to the to the state and have them assess periodically um, power outages or or things happen that throw the lights out of out of uh, out of sync and I actually, this is actually something I noticed myself making my way through the downtown. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they need to come in and reset that stuff. So why don't we make a request for the state to come out? We'll just do that at the staff level. Uh, come out, assess, see if they need to be um, uh, realigned, basically brought back into sync. Um, 
we could probably do that and have a reply and if there's a problem get it fixed before your next meeting i would appreciate that'd be yeah. great so either way something at our next yeah meeting, some sort of we'll get a report on. back uh, either okay. there's a problem or there's no problem but I, I noticed it myself it's funny that you mentioned it. i noticed it myself traveling through the downtown they seem and dawn has raised this in the past and uh the the loops get out of sync sometimes mm -hmm. for it's usually related to some sort of a an accident or power outage or something like that so uh, but why don't we I'll have uh, staff reach out and uh, we'll uh, hopefully, if that's the case, they come out and reset everything. Okay, and that'd be we great. Report back, everything's better, or we'll get a status report. Okay, so you. either way, something by the next meeting. Yeah, we'll report back next, okay. by the next meeting. No problem. I'd appreciate that very much. Sure. Thanks, sir. Um, also, I noticed that the fence is down around the old RT site. Um, do we know why? Is it because it's all of a sudden safe or that trespassing is okay or? Do we know about that? Uh, no, I noticed it's safe too. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but I can check. I'll, I'll check with the building department tomorrow if they know anything about it. Okay, because the fence was up long enough that obviously it's deterring people from going in there and all of a sudden it's down, does that mean that it's safe? And I'm not sure that that's the case. So I would be curious about that. Okay, thank you. And John, a question for you. Yep. When is the front of the town hall building going to be done? So we have a uh, design. So we're working with uh, an architect. Uh, in fact, it's the same architect that's working on the um, uh, fire station. So I have the design work and specifications are done. We need to load that into the front end, what's known as the front end, and get it bid out on the street. One of the things that we're experiencing right now is um, anything roof exterior or roof related right now, the bids are coming in astronomically high. Um, uh, Wakeless, uh, the library had a bid for their roof work. Mm -hmm. yes. I think their budget was 53,000. The low bid came in at 180,000. The problem is right now, uh, all the contractors that were bidding outside work, they're a month or two behind because of the rainy spring. So um, so we're putting it out, it's, it's, it's designed, uh, and we're putting it out to bid is the short answer. Um, in the case of White Cliffs, for instance, the architect on that project has recommended waiting and letting that backlog get through uh, because the bids are just coming in. Um, uh, devoid of reality is probably the best way to describe it. Um, you know, things that should should cost a couple hundred thousand dollars are coming in at a million dollars. Uh, people are just they're just putting out bids because they don't need or want the work right now. They're all backlogged for that type of work, and this is. Uh, it's the front, but it's also the associated roof work that goes with it. Okay. So. Okay. But yes, that's that's on the on the docket. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. That ends my report. Thank you, Leslie. Tim. Uh, just for the sake of time, I just got one thing. Um, the senior center uh, they are offering a, a new program called the Daybreak Program. It's a social day program providing respite for caregivers caring for somebody with dementia, Alzheimer's, or memory loss. It is Tuesdays from 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. at the Northboro Senior Center. Uh, provides a safe and stimulating experience with fun activities and social interaction while providing care. Partners for much needed time for themselves. Um, the Senior Center Northboro is partnered with the Senior Centers in Hudson and Marlboro. Uh, there is a voluntary $15 per day donation towards the cost of service. Um, if you need more information, you just reach out to uh, the, the senior center. That ends my report. Dawn? Um, just want to thank everybody that had anything to do with the Memorial Day Parade. And I was going to bring up the lights in the center of town, but <laughs> there we Leslie are. beat me. Right. Okay. okay. The lights uh, in the center of town. <coughs> <laughs> I will uh, add my thanks for the Memorial Day preparations to American Legion and to Westboro Cares for Troops for putting that together. Also, our public safety and public works people who do so much of the work to prepare us in advance and to get us around the course uh, as, as we proceed through that. So thank you all very much, appreciate it. Um, also Master Plan Steering Committee has, uh, through a series of meetings through May and June, finally completed and approved uh, our goals and recommendations. That's now in the hands of our consultant, BHB, who will be uh, kind of forming the entire document around that core. We'll have that for review later in the fall, September. Approximately. Uh, thank you, Kathy Jubert, our town planner here. And uh, we'll be uh, proceeding from that point. So at this point, thank uh, everyone involved with the committee who's reached, you know, got us to this point. And also thank you to the members of the public who participated by attending meetings or filling out surveys and contributing. 
And then finally, uh, just want to congratulate and thank Becca Haberman, who is uh, um, ending her term on the Youth Commission after serving for 18 years. So it's a very lengthy term of service. Becca, we thank you very much. Your, your, uh, your efforts are very much appreciated. So concludes my report. John? Uh, no report. Thank you. Moving on to public comments. Uh, any public comments tonight? You've been waiting all this time. <laughs> Not tonight. Thank you very much. New business. Uh, one reappointment of special police officers. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to recuse myself. Uh, for both or all? Or? Uh, for all. Okay. Just makes sense. All right. Thank you, Don. <coughs> Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, thank you. Chief. Just housekeeping. Annual reappointment of our special police officers. Um, we brought them back, as you know, about a year ago. Uh, three of the young men that we had appointed last year, when we do a good job of firing people, they ended up getting jobs elsewhere. So. <laughs> You know, only reappointing two, Era, Erica Abro, uh -huh. Eric from town, and uh, retired Sergeant Jim Bruce. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> For the record, uh, Vice Chair Don Rand is recusing herself um, for having uh, um, personal associations to the people involved. Uh, that remains for, uh, for the board uh, to undertake the action. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair. I move the board vote to reappoint James Bruce as a special police officer for a one-year period through June 30th, 2020. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you. And do I have another? Mr. Chair, I move the board vote to reappoint Erica Abro as a special police officer for a one-year period through June 30th, 2020. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Don, thank you, Chief. Um, Don, you have that noted that Don, uh, die. You have it noted that Don recused herself from those. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Don. Uh, next item, uh, NEDP Memorandum of Understanding. John? Yes, uh, in your packet is a draft of the updated fiscal 20 uh, agreement between the town of Northborough and the Northborough Extended Day Program. As you know, this uh, agreement has been in place in some form for over 28 years. Um, it's, a, it's a very beneficial relationship uh, between NEDP, which is a nonprofit providing services to town residents in the form of extended day um, uh, daycare in the schools. Um, what we get out of it is, uh, uh, well, the contract here calls for an increase of 4% in the payment to the town, uh, which for fiscal 20 would be $23,920. Um, it covers the space uh, and it covers um, uh, the uh, part-time administrative staff. So in the Family Youth Services Department is a part-time admin and by virtue of giving uh, them one office space, this payment, we essentially have our administrative staff down there covered. So uh, the agreement covers the expenses and to some extent uh, a little bit more for the town. And so um, I would recommend, uh, as we do every year, approval of this, or you authorize me to execute uh, this agreement on behalf of the town. Mm -hmm. So Thank you, John. Uh, any questions, any discussion? Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move the board vote to approve the FY 2020 annual memorandum of understanding between the town and Northborough Extended Day Program Incorporated for the use of office space and facilities at the town hall and to authorize the town administrator to execute same. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor. Great, thank you. Interview subcommittee, recommendation for appointments to the Council on Aging, Board of Library Trustees and Historic District Commission. Mr. Chair, I move the board vote to make the following appointments. Charles Riccia to the Board of Library Trustees for a three-year term to expire on April 30th, 2022. Virginia Sims George to the Council on Aging for a three-year term to expire on April 30th, 2022. Brian Smith is a voting member on the Historic District Commission for a two-year term to expire on April 30th, 2021. And Michael Duchesne is a voting member on the Historic District Commission for a one-year term to expire on April 30th, 2020. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Great, thank you very much. Execution of cemetery deeds 1078 and 1079. Motion? Mr. Chairman, I move the board vote to execute cemetery deeds 1078 and 1079. 
Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Thank you. Any other business to come before the board? There's just one brief item that I have. Um, annually, we review and uh, reassign possibly the uh, Sleitman liaison appointments to other boards and committees in the town. This is the discretion of the chair to do this. Um, I have been remiss in inviting you to submit your input to me. So I would ask you all to please uh, look at your liaison assignments, submit an email to me uh, if you have any concerns um, or questions about that, and then we'll follow up at a later date. Okay, thank you. And executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws. I'm sorry, any other business, John? Just a need for a brief executive session. Executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Subsection 3. Do the chair's determination that a discussion regarding the following matters in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the position of the board? Litigation, SA Farms update. I heard that word brief. Yes. Mr. Chair, I move the board vote to enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Subsection 3, Litigation, SA Farms update. Due to the chair's determination, that a discussion regarding these matters in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the position of the board. Do I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. It's by voice. Julia? Aye. Leslie? Aye. Tim? Aye. 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 And the board will return from executive session only to adjourn open session. Thank you all.